Happy Sunday, everyone, and welcome to Our Issues Birmingham. Uh, Rick Carter, I'm delighted to have as our guest today. I am today. pleased to be here with you. Rick, also known as The Troubadour. This is his book, by the way, Fables and Stories, Tales from an Alabama Troubadour. Mm -hmm. Rick Carter. Yeah. Uh, Rick, some people don't know who you are because they're not as old as we are, but we know who we are. Well, uh, we hope so. <laughs> At our age, we should. <laughs> we better hope so. Tell, you know, people don't know this but, and don't realize, but Rick started a band many moons ago called Telluride, but before that, which became ultimately another band named Rolling in the Hay, which a lot of people our age know about. But before that, you were a military brat. Right. And was raised all over the place. Yeah. And but that... somehow, literally went behind the moon, which is what I used to call Selma. Yeah. Ended uh, up there. Um, briefly, my mother was a piano teacher. And um, so I started playing music when I was just a little little kid. And we had the benefit of living on Air Force bases. So as I grew up, my mother would take me to the teen club or the airman's club or the NCO club or the officer's club because Air Force bases or military bases are entities, little towns within a town, you know, so we could play all these places. And that's where I got my groundwork playing gigs and um, being spoiled forever to play music and, or, or doomed <laughs> Whichever you prefer. Um, but I started doing that. Made, my story always goes that I played my first job for money in 1967. I made $7. My allowance was 50 cents a week. So when the guy gave me $7, it took me about two seconds to think that would take all summer plus two weeks to make that $7. And was so that, I never stopped doing it. Was that in Selma? No, that was in South Carolina, and right now I'm still making $7, so, you know, if you, you have that to look forward to if you decide to be a professional so, musician. So, when I read about you, I, I see that you've always wanted to be a professional musician. Yeah. I, I personally had no idea I was going to be a lawyer, Right. but I turned out being a lawyer, and yeah. it seems to have worked out okay for Absolutely me. Absolutely, it has. So... When do you know that's your calling? Well, I, you know, like I said, you know, I was two or three years old and I was playing the piano, and I've just never known anything else, you know. And I think that that seven dollars was an, was an incentive <laughs> in '67. But I, you know, it, it's the old thing: if you've got it, you've got it, yeah. and you'll know it. That yeah. kind of thing. And I've never known anything different. And it's all, not always a musician. It's the art of creating. You know, I like to create, whether it's a book or whether it's write songs or make a record or book a show or, it's all, you know, it all fits together hand in hand because it's creating. You know, whether, and it doesn't mean that I, tonight I'll go play a show, that's just one little bit of what I do as, as Rick Carter. You know, I, I had to book that show. I had to get the guitar. I had to change the strings on the guitar. Had to drive to the show. You know, all the little menial things that you go day to day. That's just part of it. But the drive, and and I'm past. We are both have survived the '60s. We'll put it that way. Yeah. I'm at that age where the the there is no decline in my wanting to keep going and to, to create. Well, that's beautiful. And I can't control that. That's just. Well, I got to do it. There's a lot of people that long for that desire and that staying power, that yeah. desire to continue to do that which you love. Absolutely. It's, it's, as they say, very blessed, lucky, but it's hard work. Oh, yeah. You know, everything, I mean, there's always, there's, there's different dimensions of how did you get to, from point A to point B, but hard work, perseverance, the talent, the knowledge, all those things. Don't forget anything someone taught you to get you the next step forward. You know, remember all the little bits that got you to where you are, got you to a path to go forward. You well, uh, everybody knows you famously beginning in the old days with mm -hmm. Tell You Right. Right. So talk to us a little bit about how that came about and where that took you. Um, let's see, 1977 is when we started that band in the basement of uh, my friend's parents' house in For uh, Forest Park. 
out in Birmingham. Um, we started in 77 and we just wanted to play music so badly and we were lucky, we worked hard and we still play shows 2023, we have our anniversary show coming up February the 3rd, self a plug, at the Finnick in Birmingham, Saturday, <laughs> February the 3rd, and that will be, started 77, 47 years. Same guys? There's four of the five original guys, which is unheard of. Is the four fifth guy of, still alive? The fifth guy is playing in heaven. <laughs> okay. But there's four so that's of the, the only five. Way, that's the only way you got out. That's the, only, that's the only way you can get out. You're with us forever. Um, but you know, that, that back then that was when a band was a band. Now, a lot of times, a group of musicians will get a show and they'll show up for the show and they'll go, hey, I'm Bob, I'm your drummer tonight. Yeah. You know, there's no band. A band's an unbreakable circle. And we come from the generation that if you're in a band, you're in, that is your band, that's what you do. And that's why we still have um, Telluride, Rolling in the Hay, and they're bands, you know, they're, they're a solid well, group of people. Well, when, when we come back from our short break, I wanna talk about your perspective on how the music industry has changed okay. since those days to where it is now. Absolutely. Okay? This is Our Issues Birmingham. Don't go away. We're going to take a short, short break, and we'll be right back with Rick Carter. Welcome back to Our Issues Birmingham. I'm talking with a very dear friend and somebody I've played music with myself, yep. uh, Rick Carter. Uh, no, known for so many things, I don't want to tag him to tell you right or roll it in the hay because he's an artist of his within himself and he's a creative person. I appreciate and, that. And a writer. And yeah. you know I love you. And yeah. you've always been there when I needed you to help me with music and Absolutely. crooning for critters. but. You talked about what used to be, I would call a garage band, mm -hmm. 77. Right. Compare what you saw as the music business back then, and if you can, throw some Birmingham aspects into it, to where it is now. Well, the opportunities vary from 77 to 2023. You know, there's, there's um, the old charging cover charge at a local club, those days are kind of gone. So what that does, in 1977, you wanted to get a band together, get very popular, and that way it would be reflective at the door because you would draw a lot of people. You would be compensated. Well, now it's more like we give each guy $150 and a cheeseburger. So the incentive to get <laughs> popular is not there on that level, if you see what I mean. And so that... Has, has caused a lot of people, old timers especially, to drop out of it. Well, I don't care, if they don't care, I don't care. Well, you know, the, even every generation has to have a starting point. So it doesn't matter to them if they're getting compensated by money or if they're getting compensated by stage time, experience, building a following, learning how to, to, do, that, to do that occupation. You know, so all of those things are the same. The only difference is the compensation level is drastically different. Because you could go and play the wooden nickel, AKA the Nick in Birmingham, Alabama. Back then it was a dollar to get in. So you had 400 people show up. Well, in 1977, $400 is $1,200 in today's money. They're not making that kind of money there, but they are learning how to be on a stage, how to not blow the roof off because your guitar is too loud, all the things that you would need to, the, the basic um, things that you would need to learn to go to another level, all of that still exists. But think about it, in 2023, to promote a band, you can go to your Facebook page, make up a little flyer or an event page, push a button and you've reached the entire world. Mm -hmm. In 1977, you'd call up your friends and get in his mom's gremlin and with whatever <laughs> afternoon 
particulars you may have with you. Libation. Libations. <laughs> and you would get a staple gun or a t thumbtacks and go around to every telephone pole or every western or piggly wiggly and put up posters. Take you all day long. There's still well, people can, that do that. Though. Absolutely, because people want to experience tangible action. You know, pushing a button for a 20-year-old is not nearly as cool as cutting out letters and gluing them on a piece of paper and making a flyer. I'm playing at Saturn and go stick it on a post. Well, for old guys like me, I already did all that part. Mm -hmm. You know, I want the instant, the gratification that I'm learning how to use technology to my ex yeah. to my. Um, Especially during COVID, I mean, I know everything went quiet and yeah. dark. Yeah. Including crooning for critters. Yeah. Uh, Rick was one of our panel of celebrity judges yeah. at, at times, and also our uh, lounge act mm -hmm. at times, volunteer work yeah. for our charity. Um, but today you see these mega productions. To me, I mean, I know it's glitzy and show and Hollywood and right. Taylor Swift and Swifties and got to have a ticket. Yeah. And the ticket business, I mean, just getting a ticket to some of these big acts is next to impossible. Yeah. Um, and the musician wants the consumer to see their perform. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, there's just, you know, there's this level and there's this level. And, there's, and everybody in the middle is still trying to figure out how to get from this level up to this level. It's never going to, that part will never change. What has changed is that, the, especially if you want to go to high-end concert tickets, the Taylor Swift, those kind of things like that, it's $1,500, $3,000 a ticket. You know, you could go, in our day, you could go see Mick Jagger at the WBOK Shower Stars for a dollar. Or, yeah, whatever it was. You know, so there's... Opening for the Beach Boys. <laughs> yeah, opening for the Beach Boys. <laughs> um, so, you know, the, the dollar value is, is hard to argue. It's just, it's, it's whatever the consumer decides, mm -hmm. you know. And still, musicians, if that's what you do, if that is in you, you're going to play the corner of a pizza joint no matter what. You know, I'll tell you a quick story. A friend of mine was on tour with a guy, very big name, and um, they were hitting all the major markets, Chicago, Detroit, New York City, all these places. They're out for three weeks. Come home on a Monday, the friend that was telling me the story orders a pizza. Guy at the pizza door, knock, and it's the pizza guy. It's the headline. It's the guy that hired him to go on tour. <laughs> and he said, got to make a living. <laughs> so you do what you And can. he just came off tour, a major tour, and he is the headline artist, and he's delivering pizzas. You know, it's, that's where it just becomes, you can't just create all the time. You have to pay your power bill. So the, the thing that, for me personally, that I have tried to do and still do and will always try to do is to incorporate the fact that I have to live and eat and provide with the things that I love to do. Yeah, you know. which is to create. Create, absolutely. Well, I want to talk more about that creativity within you. A lot of people don't have it. Mm -hmm. It comes naturally, yeah. I think. Yeah. I don't think, I guess it's... Uh, can be improved upon with time, but but there has to be a genetic component from the start yeah. before you can get those juices flowing. Mm -hmm. uh, and as we both know, imagination has no limit. And as long as you have an imagination and can create, I think those two ingredients together Absolutely. can generate some interesting Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. We're gonna take a quick break. Uh, for just a second, we'll be right back with Rick Carter. Don't go away. Welcome back to Art Issues Birmingham. Uh, Rick Carter, my friend, great musician, 
great creator, uh, can't call me one day and he said, I want you to have something coming by your house. So he brought me the first print mm -hmm. of the first edition of this memoir, yeah. I will call it, yeah. for lack of a better word. Absolutely. How'd this come about? Well, you know. And it is on Amazon, I am sure. Absolutely. <laughs> well, people will tell you, you ought to write a book, you know. And I, I did. I get that a lot. Well, and I did, you know. I mean, but I would have never written a book. Um, there's a, my manager, business partner, Lisa Golson, who edited the book. She was a catalyst in um, just write your stories, just do the, and that's how we wrote it, short stories. It's, there, you don't have to start at the front and end at the back and you've, got, you've read a, a book. It's full of lyrics, um, anecdotes, you know, personal experience of band houses and gigs and stuff like that. But it was a time in my life, in my career, where I had to understand that you have to have discipline in order to, you can't just willy-nilly everything. You can, but the, the, then you don't get as much done, finished, finite, job done, sitting on a coffee table, we're talking about a book. If I had just thought ideas, wouldn't it be great, we'll, we'll put this in and we'll do that. Do it, you know, and that's where, that's where people, you really draw the line. It doesn't have to be a book, it could be a, I've been saving these songs for years, we'll make a record. Or do that, or do it. You know, have, whatever it may be. I have a question. Yeah. So the creative process, it starts in your head. Mm -hmm. It ultimately gets translated into words that, I guess, go to your hand first. That writes them down. Right. And then, somewhere along the line. Some music is put in there. How does that process work? Okay, that, that would, that's writing songs, creating an original song. It comes from different things. You know, it could be a, an experience or a catchphrase that somebody says. The inspiration comes from many different ways, but you put it eloquently. That's exactly how it comes. You um, regurgitate all the things in that, in those, in that sequence. You come, your mind gets fed an idea, and you go, wow. And then you think about it, then you create whatever you want to create as far as lyrics. Um, you know, you, most of the time I come up with a hook line, a chorus, you know. Um, like my gummy just kicked in? Or whatever it may be. <laughs> does your chewing that's, gum lose its flavor you know on the story? bedpost overnight? You know? <laughs> you know, it's just that's. Do you know that story? Mm -mm. Oh, Paul McCartney's wife was coming to a, a, a dinner table that Paul McCartney uh, was sitting at the table with Jimmy Buffett. And um, she stumbled, and she said, my gummy just kicked in. Uh. And Paul McCartney said, can I use that line? And, yeah. he, and he wrote, oh, no, or no, the other way around. Jimmy Buffett heard uh -huh. her say that and said, can use I it. use that line? Yeah. And wrote a song called um, that. Well, you know, Steve Goodman, the, John Prine, the big David Allen Coe song that everybody thinks is David Allen Coe, but it's really Steve Goodman, John Prine. Steve Goodman said, I want to write the perfect country and western song. How do you think we should start it? And John Prine said, I was drunk the day my mama got out of prison. And that's how they wrote the song. And Steve Goodman gave him a brand, gave him a restored Wurlitzer jukebox for coming up with that line. But see, that's the thing about people. They don't, a general populace, they don't know who to give credit to. For, until they, till that person dies, they will always say that particular song was David Allen Coe. But he had nothing to do with that song, except sing the version everybody knows. Who all have you worked with? Oh, gosh. Almond Brothers. You know, I wrote it down on my phone, and I told it to some kid that asked me, and I was about halfway through, and goes, okay, I, I got it, I get it. <laughs> so, a lot of people. Um, <laughs> But you know, it, but you, it, you've always, I don't want to say local because you're beyond local. You're at least regional, mm. I, I would say. But one thing you may not know about Rick, he is on the road 260 days a year. Yeah, about that. That's a lot. Yeah. And he, are, he is younger than I am. Yeah, I don't look it. Um, <laughs> but see, like this, 
this intrigued me because it's life experiences, stories. So I could get back into that kid that lived that dirty band house in Panama City Beach. And that was exciting to me because I go, oh yeah, man, I remember that. And then it's like reliving it from, from, a, from a more of an, a sage um, vision of it. You know, like now I'm an older guy, that guy had a, such a good time. And you're writing it, but you're reliving it. And so when people read that story, that's what gets them because it's from the heart and it's authentic and it happened. And the way that this guy wrote it, not me, the kid that lived it wrote it. Does that yeah. makes sense? Yeah. So when people read it, they go, wow, it takes them right there. And that is the creative spark. Yeah. That's what makes me go, okay. Because I'll sample people, I'll go read this story. And I, do, I still do, I'll put a story up on Facebook. And if you get seven or 800 likes, next book. You see, <laughs> if it gets 40 or 50, then I 86 it. So it's, you know, there, once again, there goes, you couldn't do that in 1977. You'd have to call every friend you know with five digits, 46302. You know, that's all you needed. Briefly, we don't have a young demographic that watches this show, but if you had to give some advice to somebody that wanted to do what you have done, besides the word don't, what would you say? Well, I, I think education is, is the most basic primary thing that you should do. Get a trade, get a, 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 a college education, anything like that. Something, me, I, and people go, well, you don't have to fall back on anything. You, you're, you've done it. Well, you know what? 80-year-old people still have to pay the power bill in case they don't know. So find something that you can, and I hate to use the word, if you have to fall back on it, because I am the only one left in my circle that started doing this when we were kids. I am the only one left. Everybody else, when I want to go to the beach house, I call them. <laughs> With that being said, we're going to call it a show. Rick, God bless you. Thank ah, you for being with thanks me. Thanks for having me. I, love I appreciate you. I love you, Thank too. Thank you. This is Our Issues Birmingham. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next week. We get it. Your mornings are hectic. We're here to help you get ready for your day. Good Morning Alabama on ABC 3340. GMA doesn't waste your time. Local weather, traffic, and news always on your screen. It's the information you need always where you can see it, even during commercials. Plus, we have the Good Morning Alabama Live Desk. Always updating breaking news in your neighborhood and around the world. Everything you need to prepare for your day. Good Morning Alabama on ABC 3340.